and welcome everybody here in twitch chat and everybody on youtube for our latest balance patch for legends of runeterra we're gonna have our live reaction i haven't even clicked it open yet we don't know anything about it um patch 218 everybody's been super uh hyped about this patch um we're thinking that we're going to be getting our first balance patch changes um and oh major update on live balance yep since uh, since Bandle City came out, nothing has changed. So here we go, patch 218. Let's go ahead and see what we have. An update on card updates. Um, you know, so it looks like they're going to be talking about all of that here. Okay, expect to see regularly occurring scheduled card updates targeted towards impacting the meta, nerfing clear overperformance. Yes, that's what we want to see. We want regularly occurring scheduled card updates. Yes. All right, good. That's what we that's what we needed cuz we've talked about how or I guess my own my own uh, philosophy or opinion if you want to say has been that the meta game has not been bad since Bandle City's come out that it's been fairly diverse. We've had a, a really wide variety of decks that people are playing, but it's just been kind of stale. It's been like it's been, you know, the same kind of cards shuffled around different decks. Um, you know, there are uh, there are some cards that are overperforming and and are too strong. You know here and there but it's, it's not like it's not like it's a, a poor meta like whenever we had a really azir that was dominant it was just like basically that and thresh nasus and it was those two decks and they were much better than everything else here we've had a, a good variety but it's been you know a couple of months since we've had any kind of card changes and so it, it's there's been kind of nothing that new in the, in the last couple of months so um, that's what I was kind of hope I'm hoping for a good amount of buffs today, some nerfs, and just shaking up the metagame. And that's what I kind of hope that they do more regularly. And that's what it says here. It's going to be regularly occurring scheduled card updates. That's what I that's what I want to see. Even if you because just because you don't have a bad metagame doesn't mean that you can't just shake things up and just, you know, have have it, you know, fresh. I guess that's that's the thing. It hasn't been fresh. All right, so uh, here we go. Here's like the schedule of some some stuff. Or I guess you know there was a schedule of those three. Uh, looks like November we're gonna have a, a major PVE expansion, a new themed event, and a mega pass event pass. I believe in new November is supposed to be the next expansion. I guess or maybe not. It says December new expansion. Um, so maybe we don't, we don't get the next expansion until December, and then the seasonal tournament. So. Um, yeah, if we're not going to have new cards, and yeah, we definitely need a uh, big time shakeup if we're going to be waiting until December before new cards. Um, yeah, why are we updating our live balance philosophy? It's more fun this way. That's right. That's right. Let's get let's get some. Uh, um, so targets. So what what are they going to target? What are they doing? Tone down some cards that are overly impactful. That's smart. Reduce frustrating matchups. Cool. Encourage greater region diversity. We like to see that. And improve overall quality of life of underplayed champions and archetypes. That's what we want to see. All right. Without further ado, let's get into the changes. Oh, this is exciting. Nami. Okay. We talked about how just ridiculously strong Nami is in the Nami decks whenever uh, you have Nami. Okay, so it's only so what they've changed is instead of it being seven plus spell mana, it's now going to go to eight plus spell mana. Okay, so they just changed that a little bit. So it's still it's still possible to level up Nami on round four, but or I guess no, not not really. It's going to be more difficult to level up Nami on round four, right? Because so the the regular play pattern is do nothing on one, do nothing on two, play your double trouble to get rid of your three spell mana. So then. So then round three, you gain three spell mana again. So then round four, instead of just like playing like a one or a two mana spell and then playing Nami and then you attune and now Nami's leveled up, now you'll have to, you could still kind of do that though on round four, right? You you just have to play a two mana spell and then play Nami, you attune. So now Nami's at seven, but you just have to pass the round and just do nothing with your one other mana. So your Nami's not immediately leveled up kind of, but you just pass the round, then, then that one extra mana you know gets banked um so you know it's basically so like you you untap round five with the leveled up nami but sure i mean I think, I think that's a perfectly fine change you know going from seven to eight nami's really strong all the stuff that nami does is really good and i'm not i'm not mad at that change one one bit 
yeah people in chat don't put spoilers out <laughs> some people in chat i guess have, have already gone gone through and read some other ones and trying to put spoilers out there all right draven whoa that's a big change draven going down to a three two draven has been one of the very best champions in the game uh for as, for you know a year and a half you know basically ever since the the beginning of rune Terra, whenever uh, we had open open beta you know last february uh, i think or last january i guess last january is when open beta started draven's been one of the very best cards so you know the entire time for almost two years now and so moving it down to a three two we saw that with fiora we saw that being a, a big nerf to fiora when fiora went from three three to three two there's a big difference for those three mana units with two and three health because there's a, a lot of one drops are like two ones and so now it can't block two one you know one mana two ones um now it dies to mystic shot uh, a lot of stuff so like that's a big time nerf so um yeah that's that's gonna be you know again just shake things up right all right so we'll have less draven for sure yeah it's not like Dra chat somebody said i never thought draven was broken at three three yeah draven hasn't isn't really necessarily broken but it's just it's a really, really overperforming champion, and it's kind of in a really wide variety of decks and does really well. So I I can see, you know, it's been a couple of years of Draven being really, really popular, really overperforming and, and really good. So maybe maybe we get a little bit of nerf here on Draven and maybe other champions we buff up, you know, kind of switch out the cycle of like which which champions see a lot of play. Tristana. All right, so Tristana level two now grants herself impact as well as other allies. Okay, so just a small little buff. I like it. You know, like again, Tristana is not that popular of a champion. Take take like these champions that aren't very popular. Give them a small little buff. Okay, so um. Oh, but that's that's actually a pretty big buff. Okay, so now it says when you summon a multi-region ally, grant me and and it plus one plus zero and impact so each time you get a multi-region ally with leveled up tristana you're granting tristana impact so it's going to have impact one the first time impact two the second time impact three the third time and so on that's going to add up wow that's actually that's going to be a pretty big buff because that's not just impact a singular time it's not like it's not like it just levels up and now it has quick attack and impact now it's grant it's getting granted impact every for every multi-region ally that's pretty interesting so we'll see well, that does to Tristana. Nocturne, yeah, let's let's buff up Nocturne. All right, what do we got here? Nocturne now retains Nightfall, grant an enemy vulnerable, and give enemies minus one minus zero this round. Okay, so yeah, that's you know whenever whenever you had your level up Nocturne, you couldn't play it for Nightfall and you know and do that ability. So that's a very very small buff, um, but that that is a that is a nice buff to be able to have that it's level one ability also on the level two champion for nocturne but that's a small buff because if you think about nocturne most of the time whenever you're leveling up nocturne nocturne's in play and leveling up um it's it's unlikely that you have a leveled up nocturne and then are also casting a leveled up nocturne right because you you either you've either like have your nocturne in play and then you attack with a bunch of nightfalls and it levels up during the attack or um you haven't had you haven't played a leveled up nocturne yet and so you've attacked with five nightfalls but you still your nocturne in your hand is still leveled one and whenever you cast it it levels up to level two it's pretty rare to have a level two nocturne and then also cast a level two nocturne uh, because usually the game ends after you have your level two nocturne but you know for those those rare situations it's nice to have that ability still so cool yeah, you. But like I said, it's you can level Nocturne, but it's usually usually it's one of those other two scenarios. It's it even though Nocturne. I'm not saying that Nocturne's not hard to level. What I'm saying is you don't usually cast leveled up Nocturnes very much. You either whenever you cast it, it's level one that immediately turns into level two because you've already leveled it up, but it's level one in your hand. It's 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 rare to have level twos in your hand. That's what I'm saying. Echo, what do we have? predict four times to level up okay so they're just making it easier for echo to to level up so not adding in the third point of health that a lot of people kind of wanted we, like we just saw there with draven going down to the two health instead of three but with echo costing four people were kind of thinking maybe this should be a three health champion so we're not doing that but we're making it fairly easy for echo to level up four times to predict 
really not that hard. And so if you think about it, if Echo's, you know, basically going to be leveled up all the time, if you have it in a dedicated predict deck, then uh, it's going to have that three health most all the time because, you know, the leveled up Echo does have that three health. So I think that's a pretty, that's a pretty big, you know, buff. That's, you know, taking away 20% of the predicts that you need. Because we know that the thing about Echo is that level one Echo really not very good it's a four two it just strikes creates a time trick that costs two mana not that great of a card but the leveled up echo is incredible because you know it has that third point of health whenever it strikes it's making zero mana time tricks which are awesome you know I, there's a huge difference between zero mana and two mana time tricks plus of course your leveled up echo creates those three chrono breaks put them in your deck those chrono breaks are amazing so I, I think this is a really good buff for Echo because we know how the strength of Echo is the leveled up Echo. And so this is going to get you leveled up Echo uh, not only more often, but faster in the game. And so you can have leveled up your powerful leveled up Echo faster in the game. Yeah, and chat saying, yeah. And so before leveling up Echo wasn't necessarily that hard, but it, it's that extra round, you know, like you're going to be able to get that leveled up Echo faster. And that's that's going to make a big difference. And and again, yeah, that, that is true that if you're not, you know, when you're playing Shurima, it's a lot easier. If you try playing Echo without Shurima, it was pretty difficult to level. And so now it's a little bit more reliable to level Echo if you if you don't have Echo in a Shurima deck. Aurelian Soul's getting buffed. Uh-oh. I don't know about this. I, <laughs> I don't know if Aurelian Soul needs to buff myself, but... Um, okay, they're just changing that round and the level up clause back to 20. So if you if you remember, Aurelian Soul used to be uh, allies had 20 plus power to level up. And then they're like, that's kind of too easy. So they moved it up to 25. Aurelian Soul is just the type of champion that I'm kind of scared of, right? Like how powerful this card is i know it's 10 mana and everything it doesn't see a whole lot of play right now it's just a card that i'm i'm scared of <laughs> uh it's yeah so all right so it's going back to 20 so we'll kind of see uh you know it's this is my least favorite of the changes so far well you know we'll see we'll see what it does renekton what do we have okay level up is easier okay so level up used to be it takes 12 damage for Renekton. Now it's only 10 damage. That's definitely makes it a lot easier. Kind of a strange buff because, you know, it's kind of like you challenge twice, you know, the, the six and the six to get to the 12. But that's all right. So now you just have to challenge once for, so now you challenge once for the six. You can also block, right? Like if they attack you block, you do four. You have one challenge that does six. Boom. Now you've leveled up, you know, so that's kind of the thinking here. So, I, all right, I could see it. I'm not mad at it. Lux, ooh, what do we got for Lux? Lux is going down to five mana. Are you kidding me? But now it's going to be a three five instead of a four five. But that's not a big deal at all because you know, like you don't really care about that. Wow. Final Spark can be cast to directly attack the enemy Nexus. It only if they have no units on the field. Okay. Wow, those are two big Lux buffs. Wow, I've always thought Lux is been underrated and was kind of playable but yeah now we're gonna see a lot of lux moving forward because for five mana this champion is awesome like final yeah this champion's amazing at five mana this is a, this is the biggest buff so far that we've seen out of any of the champions by far yeah this is a huge buff so yeah we're, we're gonna start seeing a lot of lux now um maybe that makes culling strike you know, that, that's that's the thing about the going going from four to three is, you know, Culling Strike. Can now, you know, you can actually hit Lux with the Culling Strike now. That that could be a big thing. But, you know, like, Lux is going to be in that five mana slot with, you know, Swain and Thresh and some of these other, th you know, three mana, five, ma five mana, three power champions. There we go. That are strong. Wow, that's a big buff. The difference in cost in one mana is huge. I mean, we have had success with Lux decks recently. I don't I don't think the meta was too fast for Lux. It's just the region that Lux is in is, is kind of weird, but it does mean that Lux is gonna sit on the same spot as Radiant Guardian, because you usually want to play Radiant Guardian in Lux decks, but that's perfectly fine. Like, you know, you'll you'll take that. 
Ooh, what do we got for Quinn? All right, we got a, a buff for Quinn, adding in an additional health to Quinn. I think that's a good change. I think Quinn uh, could definitely use that extra point of health. Helps Quinn attack with the scout. Um, Quinn's been Quinn has been like one of the least powerful champions in my opinion. Um, I think that's a good change. Again, again, just shake things up. You know, um, I've always thought Lux was good, but you know, this is good. I think people are going to really find out how good Lux is now. Um, but again, Lux isn't played very much, right? Like you don't play against Lux very much. You don't play against Quinn very much. Take these champions that aren't played very much, buff them up a little bit. I like it. This is what this is what we wanted to see. So so far so good. Oh my gosh, they're leveling up my Brom. My Brom is an 06. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. Wow. Brom's already the best champion in the game, and now we're making an 06. This it just could never die now. Wow. We're we're making my man. I'm so happy about my Brom, but now I'm gonna the the only the only problem with this is, uh, you know I love playing Brom decks. I play Brom decks all the time. The only problem with this is now like other people are gonna be like, oh wow, Brom's good, and they're gonna play Brom, and I always lose to Brom decks because this card's too, you know the best card ever. So now everybody else is gonna figure out that Brom's amazing. That's the problem. But besides that. I'm going to be very happy playing my Braum decks being at 06. Wow, it's never going to die. Yeah, so one Troll Gifts with Braum, and you have a 2-8. <laughs> yeah, can't kill him with Monster Harpoon. So that's good, that's good. Alright, so that's all the champions. Okay, so that's all of our champion buffs. Alright, what do we got for our Follower Spells and Landmarks? Sparkle fly going to three mana. Wow. So no more um, a Felio spell, you know, moon weapon. Go grab your sparkle fly going to three mana. They're hurting the Zoe Nami decks. And that definitely hurts, you know, Felio decks and stuff too. Wow. Sparkle fly. Going to three. Looks like chat's really happy about this. Yeah, that's a pretty big nerf. Especially, you know, taking up that that uh, two mana slot that you you, know, you usually have with a Felio spell. Twin Blade Revenant. So this is the other side of Lost Soul. So you know, Lost Soul would make the four mana four three, not Challenger anymore. They changed the keyword from Challenger to Fearsome. Okay, that's because that thing with Challenger would just eat up all sorts of champions. Then it would go back to your hand, and it was just so hard to deal with, and it just, you know, was constant removal and everything. Now it's just fearsome. Now you can block it if you want. I, I think that's a, a much better uh, keyword for this. You know, you block with your 3-2, let it, let it go. Um, you know, it's not always just dying, going back to their hand, that kind of stuff. I think that's that's a good change. Think about, like, how to... It's nerfed, but it's still very playable, you know, right? Like, it's... Fierce, like this card's still very playable with fearsome, and you're still gonna put it in those kind of decks, and you like you want like your four three fearsomes that go back. That's that's a good, and that the fearsome kind of makes more sense with like a Draven deck anyway, getting and like it, and then it also makes more sense with like the uh, other Noxus card that turns into like the four two fearsome, the two drop. It just kind of makes more sense to begin with, than like the challenger was. Was rough. Yeah, so it's it's still a great card, it's still an infinite value engine, it's still very good. You know, you're still going to be playing it, but it's not just going to be like eating up all your champions now. That's a good change. Tenor of Terror, I like this change because I have lost to a lot of Tenor of Terrors, but I don't really play the card very much. <laughs> so they're going down to one because because when you thought about it, for four mana for just a for a non-champion you were you know you're like this is basically quinn <laughs> you know uh base you know it's basically quinn it was basically uh like the um oh, what's it called the the six mana card uh the golden sisters you know it's like golden sisters which you have to work really hard to try to find golden sisters you know quinn's obviously a champion and you got to just put this in your deck for free and you know not have to really work that hard for it and you're getting 10 power and and health you know between two bodies mm -hmm. two three and three two so 10 10 power of body and uh power and health plus you know impacts with the keywords all that for four mana which you could just you know which with a clause that was like the clause was non like the, that clause is like basically not even there you know if you've played a creative card or killed a unit with a spell like that's that's so 
easy that, that to do that that clause is basically not even there so i think this is a good change so for four mana you're still getting uh so let's see you're getting eight power worth of power and health worth of bodies and two bodies that's still a really strong card getting a one three and a three one but it's not as oppressive as it was before And it also makes sense. Somebody has a has makes a good good point. Somebody just says the Tristana buff was really good. Um, but this also makes sense because of the Tristana buff, right? Like that Tristana buff means that maybe we need to cut back a little bit on some of these other multi-region allies. And so like if we're buffing Tristana, maybe you know, if we're we should maybe nerf this tenor terror to kind of make it a little bit more even. <laughs> yeah, and Adam has a good point. These two should probably be switched. It should probably be the... So saying that the base should be the three health and the tenor should be the three power. That would that also makes sense, but... Oh, well. All right. Um, let's see. Relentless Pursuit? Going to four mana instead of three. So it's going to be like Golden Ages. It's going to four mana, but you get to grant an ally plus one, plus one. I think you're just going to be playing Golden Ages now. I think you'd rather have the Barrier Rally instead of a plus one, plus one Rally. But, you know, now it's it's going up there. Uh, same as Golden Ages. So they're, you know, yeah, just kind of making them basically the same card. It's just would you rather have Barrier or plus one, plus one. Yeah, so it's not going to get Nopified anymore. But if you want to attack again, it's going to cost four mana. Remember, see, back in my day, Relentless Pursuit was three mana and fast speed. Back in my day. You'd play it during combat, and then you get to attack immediately again. Stone Stackers. Okay, so Stone Stackers, I was like, I was like, wait, they buffed this card up to be three health, but they got rid of tough. Okay, so there's no tough anymore. But now it's, it's just going to be a two mana, two, three with impact. No tough. I think that I think that's a fair. I think that's fair. It's, it's it was um okay, it was a little bit too resilient, but I think, you know, it's not just a straight up nerf, right? Because it's not it's not just a straight up nerf, but it 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 uh cuz it gains that third point of health. So it's still not going to be like super easy to kill, but I think I think that's a good change. That it is a nerf obviously, but not like a not a strict nerf, I, I suppose. Yeah, chat's very happy about this one. <laughs> yeah, good change. I like it. Aloof Traveler is awesome. All right, what are we doing here? Just changing it from a 3-4 to a 2-3. Okay, yeah, because for 4 mana, like a 3-4 four for 4 is like pretty big. And so it got to do an amazing ability plus be a 3-4. So, all right, I think that's a good change too. You get, All right, cool. You still have your ability with Aloof Travelers. But yeah, let's make it a 2-3. Let's make it something that's like trading with two drops basically because you know two mana three twos are are quite a thing so okay we should see less aloof travelers now because that three four those three fours they were so hard to kill so hard to trade with yeah now it can't block fearsome anymore that's you know that's a nerf for sure like that's a pretty big nerf and so um good <laughs> it that's a card that probably deserved a nerf our next set of changes focuses on targons Ooh, Moon Dreamer. I like playing Moon Dreamer. That's a good card. So getting a 3-6 invoke. So now we have Thresh Body. You know, like that's 3-6 is Champion Body, right? You know, Thresh, Swain. You're getting that body on Moon Dreamer where you get to invoke whenever you play it. Okay, so Moon Dreamer basically a champion. No. <laughs> Just adding in one point of health. All right, maybe not, but. Okay. Lunari Priestess going to a 2-2. Two, two. That definitely, you know, so they're making, you know, they're wanting more people to invoke. We got the Aurelian Soul buff. Those are definitely buffs to couple invoke cards. That's a that's a good change. Wow, Solari Priestess 2-2 two, two also. That's a big change. So yeah, these two, these are all pretty big changes. So yeah, they want people to start playing Targon again, it looks like. Wow. Robin's a 5-6? Whoa. Five six is really big for five. Like that's a that's some. There's not other. There's no other five six for five. And now, this is a huge buff to, for Leona being a five six. It just it just 
kills all the other five drops, right? Like all the other five drops are five fives. It survives against everything. So it's it's not only like a five six for five that's just like a vanilla. It also, you know, has that daybreak ability. It creates another card. And then it also has the the big time it's always day. Wow, that's that's a that's a buff right there. Ooh, the, then they're just giving the Scourge Overwhelm? All right, so now, you know, before the Scourge would, like, basically finish out games by giving everything else Overwhelm, but now the Scourge itself also has Overwhelm. Man, all right, yeah, they're really buffing up Targon. All these all these buffs are pretty big. Okay, and then some more Targon buffs. So... Dragons clutch, draw two different dragons, or grant your dragon allies plus one, plus one, and overwhelm. So now you get to give all your dragons overwhelm with dragons clutch. Okay. There, yeah. We might start seeing a lot more Targon, which that's bad for my Braum decks. <laughs> my Braum decks don't like facing Targon, that's for sure. Yeah, you get to grant Aurelian Soul overwhelm and Eclipse Dragon overwhelm and everything. Ruin Dragon Guard, go into a 3-4. That's a, that's a, you know, okay, change. So basically, you know, why play Loyal Badger Bear anymore? <laughs> you might as well just play Ruin Dragon Guard instead of Loyal Badger Bear. It's just a strict upgrade, 3 mana, 3, 4, but then you also just have this ability. Um, yeah, so no, no more Loyal Badger Bear ever. Yeah, Dragon's Clutch, that, that's pretty insane. Granting them all Overwhelm, that, this could be scary. You know, giving Shavon, you know, if you have a few dragons in play, you, know, you have two or three dragons in play, just giving them all overwhelm. That can be really scary. Yeah, that's really good. This is this is now, you know, before you're like, maybe we play a dragon's clutch. Now you're playing three dragon's clutch. Because if it's, you know, you get like a, a three mana draw two is awesome, but then also three mana burst speed plus one plus one overwhelm. So it's like a great combat trick with overwhelm at burst speed. So they like make blocks first. They don't realize they're going to have overwhelm. That's burst speed overwhelm. Yeah, that's that's incredible incredible yeah that's that's a three of automatically in dragon decks wow and now herald the dragons being a one two all right nice little change so it's not going to just die to vile feast and that kind of stuff um yeah that that's a nice little change there yeah dragon dragons definitely we're going to start seeing some dragons Faces of the old ones go into an 03. They're helping out Freljord ramp decks. Vanguard Sergeant's a 3 4 now? Wow. For Demacia. That's, you know, that's pretty nice for these elite decks. Like, where you're like kind of thinking like which three drop to kind of play and all that kind of stuff. A 3 4. That definitely makes me want to play some more Vanguard Sergeant. Yeah, so just another, like, why would you ever play Loyal Badger Bear? Now, Loyal Badger Bear now creates a 4 Demacia. And it's an elite for all the elite synergies and everything. Wow. That's a buff right there. All right, what do we have for Deaths and Ada? Damage dealt to all enemies now scales with darkness damage increases. Oh, man. Oh, man, is darkness control happy. So now you know how, like, your darkness will do, like, 4 damage, but then it'll do, like, 2 to the enemies now it's going to just do four to all enemies wow five to all enemies six to all enemies okay that's that's kind of ridiculous so now yeah now decinate is just going to be the top end card for all these darkness decks you're going to have three decinate whoa yeah so it's just it's turning in like every go turns every go hard into like old school pack your bags basically because you know you play like the cost reductions and it's just gonna be like one mana do, do five to all your stuff wow so yeah now now decinate it's basically decinate creates old school pack your bags Okay, now we got some. So those are all the card updates. So it's going to be really interesting to kind of see just what happens. But that that's what that's what we want. Like I I don't love all these changes. Like I don't love this dragon's clutch change. I don't love the sergeant or the decinata change. I mean I don't. 
I don't know. Uh, the sergeant change is fine, but I, I don't. That seems like that may get really messy, and this this could get kind of ridiculous. Don't love all these Targon change, you know. But the thing is, is like just let's just kind of switch it up. You don't really play against dragons that much. Now we're gonna see a lot of dragons. Now we should see a lot of Lux. Like I think Demacia and Targon were probably the two regions that got helped the most from these changes. I think we're gonna see a lot more Demacia, Targon, dragon decks, all that kind of stuff. Um, I was thinking that we're going to get like some something with like Mayor or Loping Telescope or something, but it doesn't look like it. But Aloof Travelers gets nerfed a little bit. So not very much happening with Bandle. You know, Aloof Travelers, Stone Stackers, Tenor of Terror. So those three were nerfed a little bit. But then you had Tristana buffed. So less less to happen there than I expected. I think Demacia, yeah, I think Demacia Targon, especially Targon, is the big winner here. Then you also have, uh, you know, darkness control trying to kill dragons now. All right, so what's what's the new lab update? So they talked about in November, um, they're all going to be the next patch. So it's in a couple of weeks that we're going to be getting uh, all these labs cycled out. I'm kind of, I'm worried about that. You know, I really like the Lab of Legends. I really like the Saltwater Scourge. I'd, I was hoping they would just keep adding on to those kind of things instead of cycling them out. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about this. So we'll, you know, we don't know what, what it's going to be replaced with right now, but we're, th I guess they're going to have new labs. So we'll have to kind of see what that is. All right. Some bug fixes, anything. Uh, oh, Mimic will now correctly copy non-champion spells and will no longer reveal created cards to the opponent. Oh, never mind. Okay. Never mind. That wasn't what I thought it was. Okay, it's so no big time bug fixes. Because sometimes they put like buffs in here. Oh, before yeah, Shellfolk wouldn't create copies of champions with predict. I, I had I had that happen. Like you predict, put a champion on top. Shellfolk's supposed to make a copy of that champion, but it didn't. So now it will. Okay. So there we go. That's hey, can't be mad. We got we're gonna have a fresh meta game. We're gonna have some things really shake up. It's gonna be interesting to kind of see what happens with all of these cards. Um, and that's what hopefully we get more regularly, as we talked about at the very beginning. You know, like that's that's what we're just wanting is these kind of balance patch changes regularly happening, you know, regularly occurring scheduled card changes. Um, hopefully that just happens more often. And so we can just kind of have, you know, new medic, you know, if, if dragons are too good, you know, then we can go back and nerf some, you know, like, you know, let, let's just kind of keep shaking it up and letting all of the different parts of legendary terra be able to have their day uh, in the sun all right uh so those of y'all watching later on youtube hit that like button over there leave those comments what are your favorite buffs favorite nerfs um you know what are your favorite changes or what what changes you know did are you sad they didn't do or you know anything like that what are you excited to see on stream what do you want me to play starting tomorrow whenever we get the new cards out you know what kind of decks we need to make we need to make some dragon decks braum um you know what uh, Tristana, we had, oh man, that Robin change is big time. Just all these in invoke cards. You know, maybe we need to start making, you know, playing more invoke decks. Oh, Lux, obviously. Yeah, definitely got to start playing some Lux, maybe some Quinn, Renekton. You know, we can try out some of these, these champions that got buffed a little bit, Echo, um, that kind of stuff. So let me know over there in the comment section. But that's going to be it here for patch 218. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you for the next video.